I hereby call the October 7th, uh, 7 p.m. City Council Finance Committee to order councilors a um, couple pieces of information. Um, the DPW Commissioner, Mr. Alley, is unable, unfortunately unable to join us tonight. He had a conflict tonight. Oh, okay. uh, he called me last week about that. So when we get to that, I'm going to make a motion to postpone number three. Uh, and also the CFO, Mr. Clarkson, is on vacation. Uh, he will not be returning uh, to work until the 15th. So I just wanted to make you know that as well. And also the Ward 2 Council, Monaghan. Uh, Mr. Monaghan was unable to join us tonight for a different matter. Um, all right, we're going to go to number one, please. Reappointment of William R. May, Jr. of 61 Oak Street, Brockton, Mass., to the position of Director of Planning and Economic Development for the City of Brockton for a five-year term ending June 2024. Invited Rob May, Director of Planning and Economic Development. Good evening, Mr. May. Good evening, Mr. President, Councillors. I have a uh, statement. I can't believe it's been five years. No. Um, in that time, I think um, the city has done uh, our office has done an incredible job at, at bringing um, both the community and uh, the planning organizations together. Um, we've um, produced a uh, citywide comprehensive plan for the first time in 20 years. Uh, we've worked in downtown, in um, Camp Pello. On the east side, uh, we're working, starting to work uh, around the uh, DCAM property, and um, we have plans to work in the <coughs> Um, Good Samaritan uh, Medical Center area for life sciences. And um, there is a new open space plan that we'll be working on this year. It's an update to our uh, five-year open space plan. So um, I guess there is a lot of work still left to be done, but uh, we continue to persevere and to move the city of Brockton forward. Thank you so much, Mr. May. Any questions for the planner? Motion to recommend favorably. Second. On the motion? Yeah. Just on the just, motion, Council Just Fowler, on please. the motion, I, I'll just speak for myself. I, Mr. May, I think you'll find a much more collegial and working relationship, uh, yes, sir. at least with this counselor. I appreciate the fact that you've mentioned that uh, for a variety of reasons, you're able to share more information, present information. Uh, some of us are may be overly inquisitive about things, but it's just to make sure that we have an answer to a constituent that may raise a question. Sure. So I look forward to uh, your continued service with the city. I, you're not going to do everything to please all of us because not everyone is going to uh, you know, agree with anything that any administrator does. But I think on balance, it's going to be a good relationship. And I, uh, thank, you. I thank you for beginning to to uh, really share information with us and keep, up, keep us abreast of what's going on. So uh, it's my pleasure to support you. Councilors, uh, on the motion as well, I just want to say, uh, you know, Mr. May and I have had some really good conversations. He's an expert in this field. Uh, and I will say he's highly regarded, not just in the industry, but at the State House. And, and we do not want to lose the connections that we have, Lieutenant Governor, and the development happening right now. So I'm glad that Mayor Rodriguez put this forward. Um, any, any other questions on the motion? There was a motion made to send it back favorable to the full council. It was properly second. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, motion carries favorable back to the full council. Thank you, yes, Mr. Sir. May. Thank you, council. Thank you. We'll go on to number two, please. Reappointment of Daniel Campbell, 16 Belcher Ave, Brockton, Mass., as a constable in the city of Brockton for a term of three years. Invited Daniel Campbell. Mr. Campbell, good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm doing good. I'd like to apologize to my parents. I oh, just no, came no. from the shop, and no, I no, okay. absolutely no need to apologize. Do you have a statement for the for the councils on the finance? I do not. Okay. Motion to recommend favorably. Second. It's a motion made, and remember, it's a reappointment. It was motion made. It was properly seconded. Favorable. Back to the full council. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed. Reappointment goes back favorable to the full council. We'll vote on it next week. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Have a good evening. Um, we're going to read number three, and again, we are going <clears> to <throat> postpone that. Order, in order for the city to seek authorization for the acceptance of streets in the city of Brockton. Purpose, common convenience and necessity requires the acceptance of cities, sorry, acceptance of streets in the city of Brockton as public ways for purposes of public access, repairs, snow removal, emergency vehicle access, maintenance and care of all roads in the city of Brockton. Invited, Lawrence Rowley, DPW Commissioner. Councilors, as I said, Mr. Rowley couldn't join us tonight. He asked that we postpone it respectfully. I'd like to entertain a motion. So moved. Motion made by Councilor Neri. It was seconded. 
Yes, second it. It was seconded by uh, Council Beauregard. Uh, all in favor of postponing to the, the next, to the next, uh, the next, next FinCom. All opposed, it's gonna be postponed until our next FinCom meeting, Madam Clerk, thank you. We'll go on to number four, please. Authorization of the payment of $43,494.98 from fiscal year 20 finance purchase of services to Rehoboth Solar for the billing period of May 28, 2019 through June 25, 2019. Invited Tori Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. Do you have a statement about this matter on behalf of Mr. Clarkson? <laughs> I do. Um, Thank you. So we have a net metering power credit um, with um, Rehoboth. Rehoboth, and it allows us 20% credit on our electric bills. So we own the meters, but the solar arrays are um, owned by the company, and so this is a bill that we're requesting to pay, um, but we want people to know that we are receiving a 20% discount on um, electricity through owning the meters from the power that's coming from the solar Thank power. you, that's a very important fact, thank you. Council recommend questions? favorably. Second. Made. It was properly second favorable back to the full council. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, that motion carries. Favorable back to the full council. Number five, please. Ordered. Transfer in the amount of $433,324 from Law Department Purchase of Services to Law Department Personal Services other than overtime. Invited, Philip Nasrallah, City Solicitor, Tori Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. Good evening again. Good evening, thank you. So we're looking to, during the budget hearings, we're looking to transfer um, 433324 from purchase of services back to the um, personal services line. There was an error that was made during the council and it came out of um, the wrong item. So we're looking to correct that. Thank you. We do have the solicitor here as well, counselors. Counselors, we just heard the explanation. Uh, you have a question, Councilor well, Cruz, please. So it was just, put into the budget incorrectly when the budget was being prepared no when the budget came to council there was a line item that was reduced the legal budget was reduced was originally requested to reduce by 433 when it was reported personal services salary line was reduced by the four hundred and thirty three thousand dollars so we are here to correct that um, clerical um, error that happened during the council hearings. So clerical error, just we, we deducted the wrong place. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Any other favorable. questions, counselors? Second. Thank you, that was quick. <laughs> There's a motion on the floor. It was probably second. It's a favorable back to the full council. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, it carries favorable back to the full council. Thank you. You're welcome. Next item, please. Ordered acceptance and expenditure of the total grant funds in the amount of $240,000 from Massachusetts Department of Energy Resources, DOER, Green Community Competitive Grant to City of Brockton Mayor's Office, Green Community Competitive Grant Funds. Invited, Tori Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. She just have you stay up there, huh? <laughs> So this, this is a grant that the um, city receives, so we're looking to appropriate these funds. Councilors, any questions? Motion to recommend favorably. Second. Okay, on the motion. On the motion, Councilor Castro, please. Thank you. I did a little bit of research about this. The Green Communities Grant Program, a purpose of it is to find clean energy solutions to decrease costs and strengthen the local economy, as well as technological help and financial supplementation for local initiatives that improve energy efficiency. Uh, the question I wanted to ask Ms. Preval is that I understand the project cost is $331,590 and we're getting 240,000. So does this mean we have to make up the difference which is $91,590? I'm looking at attachment C, scope of grant award. Council, I'm not 
sure on that. It appears that we would need to, but I would need to look at that further to see if those are additional expenses or costs that we would have to cover. I understand. Um, Mr. Chair, the order did not include the match or how much money the city would have to come up with. Um, what, I, what, I, what I would suggest, because it's valid questions, um, we could always entertain a motion, and it was already seconded, right, to send it to the full council. It would give a, a, week's, a week's time to get all those answers, um, or the other alternative is withdraw the motions and postpone it. Um, but there is a motion on the floor right now. Um, and again, do you, do you think you would have enough time to get the information that Councilor Castro is talking about? Oh, definitely. Absolutely. So, Council, it's the will of the Council. That's fine. I'm willing to proceed. Willing to move as forward. As long as I get the information. Yeah, that's a condition precedent. That's fine. Condition precedent. Um, Council, there's, there's a motion on the floor, properly second. It's favorable. Um, back to the full Council, again, with the condition attached to it that we got to get the information uh, to satisfy Councilor Castro's inquiry. All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, motion carries. Favorable back to the full council with the condition attached. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We'll go on to number seven. Ordered a copy of all legal documents executed between the city and the Brockton 21st Century Corporation related to the transfer of control for these properties to the city and the outstanding. Could, we, could I move to waive further reading and I'm going to move to postpone this? Uh, you can, and I also just want to state that Mr. Evans, who's a great person, uh, got in touch with me last week, and unfortunately he wasn't able to attend. He was very apologetic. But, of course, there's a motion on the floor to waive the reading. All in favor of waiving the uh, pro second. Someone has to second. Second. Uh, waive the reading. Raise your hand. Oppose. And you I, waive I, the reading, and then council. Councilors, I'm going to move to postpone to the next FinCom. We still do not have the 2018 audit, which is being conducted on B21. Uh, and without that, it's meaningless to go forward. Council, do you think it should be next FinCom or the first FinCom in the next month? Next FinCom. We'll have that by then? We should. I don't know. Well, you, it's your motion. Whatever you want, Council. You want to do next FinCom? Uh, I always postpone it again. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I beg your pardon? We can always postpone it again. All right. Mm -hmm. Motion to postpone to the next FinCom. It's motion on the floor, and it was, it was seconded uh, to postpone to the next FinCom. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, that motion carries. Madam Clerk, it's going to be postponed to the next FinCom, please. Number eight. Order. That sections 26B to 26E, inclusive of Chapter 100 and 11 of the Mass General Laws, MGL Chapter 11, 26B to 26E, be he and hereby is accepted by the City of Brockton in accordance with Section 26A of Chapter 111 of the Massachusetts General Laws, MGL Chapter 11, 111, um, Section 26A. Invited Philip Nasralla, City Solicitor. Good evening, Attorney Nasralla. Mr. Chairman. Counselor. This order is, is in regards to the reconfiguration of the Board of Health. Right. Mm -hmm. The, this order is not the same order as the home rule petition would be. Home rule petition, I don't see it down here at, at, on tonight's agenda. I, think it's, uh, good. I don't think we should be handling one without the other. Because to vote on this, you're accepting the actual form of the, of the uh, last general law, whereas the home rule petition has changed, the, the significantly changed the stat status of the executive of the uh, commissioner's position to something totally different than what is in Mass General Law. So I, I think they need to both be on here at the same time to be discussed appropriately. Co Attorney Nezarello, do you have any? No, I agree you, with thank that. Thank you, Mr. McGuire, Council Lodge. I agree with that. In fact, uh, Council President, I, uh, my office attempted to contact Attorney Resnick just to float that by her, and I think she would have been in agreement, but she was unavailable today. I think they should both be addressed at the same time. Mr. President, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, it, it, and through you to my colleague from Ward uh, at large, uh, we don't need a, a home rule petition. What we need to do is we need to accept mm -hmm. Section 26A of Chapter 111, which reads, a city by accepting the provisions of this section and sections 26B to 26E inclusive by vote of the city council and approval of the mayor and a town by accepting the provisions of said sections by vote of the town 
may create a health department to replace the Board of Health therein. Such health department shall consist of a Commissioner of Health who shall perform and exercise the duties and powers of a Board of Health with the advice of an advisory council. And then 26B, 26C, 26D, and 26E go on to spell out exactly how that framework would operate with an advisory council. Um, and so uh, respectfully, I think the council needs only to accept 26A and does not have to go through a home rule petition which would be approved by us and sent to uh, the legislature for action. And if there's no objection, I can show you 26A if you. No, I, I read that and I, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I, and I wasn't, uh, my statements were not to indicate it couldn't be done, only simply in the, for the form of uh, easy flow and, and a seamless uh, attention to both of those things. But I agree you could address one without the other. And so if I, if I could continue, the, the issue is, uh, and I don't see this in the order, it really should have said, and I, an amendment would have to be made, that we accept the provisions of Section 26A of Chapter 111 along with the provisions of Section 26B through, through E. And that would set up a completely modernized approach mm -hmm. to health issues in the city, expand on services. Um, it's the mayor's intention to, to place different entities such as the Council on Aging and Human Services in his office and some other, um, I actually have it here, and some other departments under the Commissioner of Health. Right. And the beauty of that would be you've reduced the chief executive's span of control. So that instead of having four or five people report to the mayor, only one person would report. And it's analogous to what they do at the state level, where you have a secretary of public safety, then you have different commissioners and undersecretaries. But uh, it, you know, it's the will of the council. If if you if you want to postpone it, uh, I, that's fine. But I, I really think this is a wonderful opportunity for this city to go forward, qualify for grants, have a modernized approach to health issues, address various health issues for elders, for children, nutrition, uh, inspections. Uh, I mean, it's almost limitless what we could do if we have a more modernized approach to how we treat health issues in Brockton. Thank you. The only uh, thing I had not, uh, ex excuse me, had not examined or would like an opportunity to look at that is the um, union issues that may arise in that. And we have not examined that today. Councilor Cruz, please. Thank you. I think, first of all, I mean, it may be a good place for us to go. There is a lot to this. And I think what what uh, Councilor McGarry is referring to is there are two separate questions here. And accepting the state laws, we still, to do the other things that the mayor has proposed, we'll take a home rule petition. And to me, I don't think we can do one without the other. And again, I have many, I'm not prepared to vote on this tonight anyways. I have many, many questions about what other cities and towns have done this, how some of these other uh, departments that the mayor wants to put under this, really how they jibe with with health, the Board of Health, uh, you know, sealer of weights and measures. I don't quite understand how that's a, a Board of Health issue. Um, and it can be explained to me, I'm sure. But there are two separate proposals that need to work together here. And by a just acting on one, I think we're causing a problem because the other factors that Council Fowell just talked about the mayor is proposing, will take a, a home rule petition, I believe, and there are other issues. I mean, one of the biggest questions I have, and I'd, I'd like to see the mayor here and, and somebody else who's been, is this proposes you would have to have an MD become the director of the Board of Health, which means I, I'd be interested in where we're going to find an MD that with residency that is going to take this job and live in the city for what kind of money are we talking about? It's, so it's, generally speaking, it's an attractive thought process. The devil is in the details, and I think without the two acting being <coughs> worked on together by us, I think we leave too many questions out there. There's too many questions for me at this point, and uh, 
uh, you know, I think there is there are answers I want be long uh, beyond what what uh, Attorney Nesrella can tell us. I, I'm very interested in knowing how many other cities and towns in the state have accepted this. What is their experience with it? Uh, how long has this been uh, been <coughs> around? You know, th this could be something good, but uh, there's a lot of questions. This is a major, major piece of legislation that. I think both pieces have to be acted on together so we can, I think we need to examine both pieces together because you can't, I, I wouldn't agree to do one without the other and maybe we don't want all the other pieces to be fit in there. I think it's up to us to, to look at that but I think we need to look at this whole thing together and I think we need the mayor here, I think we need the current Board of Health, Dr. Brophy, you know, to give us opinions on, again, my biggest question is where are we going to find somebody to take that job? With the, we can afford an MD's pay uh, that's got also going to live by residency here in Brockton. So uh, I'd be interested in getting the two together. I think the two need to be looked at together with more people. I need more answers on, on this. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, well, I also think, uh, I think, I think it's a good idea in theory, um, but, but I also would like our own legislative council to be here as well. Exactly. Um, the fact that Attorney Nazarella is talking about he has to review union, which rightfully so he needs to, see what ramifications it may or may not have. Um, and, and again, the mayor, unfortunately, is, is not able to join us. So um, what is the, any other questions or discussions on this before us? Councilor Ianeri, please. The Dean. Uh, the Dean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, I, I co you know, I, I uh, team up with what my counsel from Ward 1 is um, also mentioning here um, in regards to this matter. I know I signed on to it as well as a few a few other councils did as well. I think we did more or less so we could get it uh, before the council and have full discussion about it. But I don't disagree with some of the things that are being um, mentioned here. And if we're going to do it, I, I would want us to do it in the most uh, appropriate and right and correct way to be truthful with you than to see us do something uh, a little different. So um, at this time, I'm going to make a motion that we do postpone this um, and the proper people uh, before us at our next um, uh, finance <coughs> meeting in October. Thank you. Council, would you, want it, you want it the next FinCom or the 1st of November? First, uh, why, don't we do the first, why don't we do the first one in November? That gives everybody ample time, even gives uh, Attorney Nezzarello and others to sit down and uh, re redo a hash as well and probably bring him up a little bit more speed as well. I, I, like I say, let's do it right. If we're going to do it, I think we need to do it the correct way. I'm not disagreeing with what Council Fowler is saying, but I, I, I think let, let's do it all in one shot and, and, and do it because it's going to take some time and, and the next and, and obviously it's also going to be in the, the lapse of whoever the next mayor is as well. So. Let's do it the first, um, first FinCom in November. It's a form of a motion. There's a second, second. Councilman Castro. On the motion. Uh, on, the mo on the motion. I just request that uh, invited to the next meeting is either our current Board of Health or Dr. Brophy, the Chairman of the Board of Health, yep. for just their thoughts and views on this also. Yep, Madam uh, Clerk will duly note that. Thank you. And, and our own Legislative and our Council. Own legislative yes, council, yes. Absolutely. And, and Mr. Well, Chairman, could council. we also invite Attorney uh, Bridges, who did uh, Megan Bridges, yes, Attorney Assistant City work Solicitor, and, please. And uh, research on this matter. We'll thank put you. Put it together. So. <coughs> Madam Clerk got those, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a motion on the floor, it's properly second. We're going to postpone it until the first FinCom the month of November. All in favor? All opposed, that motion carries. Postpone until the first FinCom in November. We'll go to number nine, please. Order. The city accepts the fourth paragraph of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40, Section 5B, which allows the dedication without further appropriation of all or a percentage not less than 25% of particular fees, charges, or receipts to a stabilization fund established under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40, Section 5B, to be effective for the fiscal year beginning on July 1st, 2019, or take any other action relative thereto. Invited, Philip Nasrallah, City Solicitor, Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. Good evening. Uh, good evening. I had a uh, conversation earlier today, Councillor Farwell, and I, I indicated I thought it appropriate that uh, Troy Clarkson be here for this particular matter, and not realizing uh, Ms. Uh, Privell was going to be here, but and I don't know what she's prepared to do or not do, but I, I did know that uh, Mr. Clarkson was going to be absent. I thought he would be a, an integral uh, person to be present for this particular hearing. 
if there's any answer, if there's any questions that you have that I can answer, I'd be more than happy to um, to answer them. And Thank if you, you wanted to postpone it to another time, I mean, it's up to you. Councilors, what's the will? Do you have any questions, or do you would like Mr. Clarkson to appear before us, Council Farwell? M Mr. Chairman. Thank you first of all for being here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Council Farwell, please. I, I could I could be reading this in error, but it says, with respect to Chapter 40, Section 5B, it says a vote to dedicate or terminate a dedication, meaning the funds into this into this account shall be made before the fiscal year in which the dedication or termination is to commence and shall be effective for at least three years. So I think it's important to have Mr. Claxton here because these, these ask us to begin it. They request that they begin in FY20, and I don't believe we can do that. If, if I've read this statute correctly, I believe we could set it up for 21, but I don't believe, I don't believe we can effect, set it up for uh, for the fiscal year that began July 1st, 2019, according to the statute, if what I'm reading is correct. I, and obviously, I would defer to Attorney Nesra. Want to make a motion to postpone, Councillor? Uh, actually, I would first move to take 9, 10, and 11 collectively. Second. Okay. Okay, well. We'll and then I would move to postpone all of them. <laughs> all right. So, what we'll do, we already read 9. Uh, if Madam, oh, take a motion. Motion to take uh, 9, 10, and 11 collectively. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. Madam Clerk, if you could read number 10, number 11, please. <laughs> sure. 10. Order. To see if the city will dedicate all or a percentage which may not be less than 25% of the local option excise on retail marijuana sales revenues collected under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 64N, Section 3, to the Community Impact Stabilization Fund established under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40, Section 5B, effective for fiscal year 2020, beginning on July 1st, 2019 or take any other action relative thereto. Invited, Philip Nasrallah, City Solicitor, Tory Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. 11, order. To see if the city will dedicate all or a percentage which may not be less than 25% of the community impact fees collected under Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 64N and related host agreement community agreements to the Community Impact Stabilization Fund established under the Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40, Section 5B, effective for fiscal year 2020, beginning on July 1, 2019 or take any other action relative thereto. Invited, Philip Nasrallah, City Solicitor, Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. Council Falwell, please. Uh, move to postpone items 9, 10, and 11 to the first FinCom in November. Second. Second. Motion on the floor is properly seconded to postpone 9, 10, and 11 to the first FinCom meeting in the month of November. All in favor? All opposed? That motion carries. Thank you very much. We'll go on to the last agenda item, Councilors, and once it's read, I just want to give some information, if I could. Resolve to put on notice the owners or operators of Lubris Auto Body, located at 64 Elliott Street, Brockton, and the owners or operators of DNG Auto, located at 8 Perkins Street, Brockton, to notify them that a public hearing will be held concerning revocation of their licenses. Councilors, I met uh, in depth with the city clerk, Mr. Zioli, to uh, vet this uh, resolve out. Uh, what's before us tonight is simple. Does the City Council, acting as finance, wish to move forward to the full Council on a possible revocation uh, of the licenses? Uh, if, if so, and we move favorable, uh, then the City Clerk has asked that we do it uh, in November to give uh, ample time for preparation and also proper notification. Um, so that's the only thing that's germane to us right now. Either yes, we want to move forward and have a hearing at the full City Council, or no, we don't, and it would be an unfavorable. Councilor Cruz, please. This question, I just want to make sure, do we have complaints from the police to go against this? It's my understanding that we do. Okay, thank you. That's all I need. Mr. Chair. Councilor Ianeri, please. If, if I might ask, but, uh, and, and, I, and I realize probably the situation, but uh, this is the same garage that we uh, did due diligence with just a year or so ago when I was council president, and I thought we had it straightened out, but obviously something's transpired a little differently. Am I correct? Is that what's happening? Yes. 
I believe so. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Same, same thing has continued on, in other words. Yes. And I think what would happen is if we do council go forward, all the, uh, all the information and facts would come out during said public hearing. And, and make sure that the people that come before us also understand what we are doing uh, would also be a great help because the people that came before did not, and, and I'm not trying to be rude, but if they have to bring a translator with them, they should bring one with them because that was the issue that we had a problem with. Correct. Thank you. So, councilors, um, what is the will of the council? Do we choose to send it back to the full council to schedule, asking the city clerk to schedule a hearing for possible revocation of said licenses, or send it back unfavorable with nothing? That's what's really germane to us right now. I, I believe we should leave it up to the will of the councilors involved. Will, will the councilors involved? You brought it before us, right? Do you, you want to move? You want to move? Oh yeah, for definitely, November. definitely. Council, do you want to entertain a motion to send it back favorable yes. to schedule yes. a hearing on a possible revocation? Yes. Second. Yes. That's the form of a motion that was properly seconded, and the clerk had asked uh, if we could give some time. Uh, so as chair of finance, I think uh, through you, make sure that we're all in agreement that it should be the second city council in November. Point of, point of information? Council. Is the hearing at finance or is it a council? It's a council hearing. Council. Council, council hearing. hearing. Council hearing. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And uh, the city clerk said we... we kind of need to have a little time. Mm -hmm. So is that is that acceptable if we schedule it for the second city council in November? Okay, so we're sending it back to the full city council, we're favorable, uh, authorizing the city clerk to do anything uh, within his powers uh, relative to uh, preparing and notifying, and that will be scheduled for the second city council in the month of November. All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, that motion carries. Madam Clerk, did you get all my gibberish that I was talking? <laughs> um, lack of sleep does that for you, I'll tell you. Um, Councilors, is there anything else? Councilor Lally, you don't need to stand. It's FinCom. Right. If you want to stand. I'm, I'm, I'm busy in my head trying yes. to remember Councilor's recognition instead of moment of personal privilege. Yes, yes, Too many yes, things going yes. on. Um, I've been asked by Councilor Azak, since she's under the weather, to uh, announce in, on her behalf uh, Tower Fest. Um, Tower Fest is happening at DW Field Park on October 12th, Saturday, October 12th, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, there will be a reptile show, a storyteller, live music, uh, birds of prey, a balloon man, and free pony rides, which is what you will find me at. Um, no. Uh, there will also be crafts and face painting and a raffle and things like that. Uh, it is something that I think is fantastic for the whole city. Thank you. Thank you. Councilors, I, I know uh, almost all of us, if not all of us, uh, attended the, uh, the Shoe City Festival. Mm -hmm. um, it was excellent. Uh, it really was. And, and we also had the, um, the historical uh, event going on at the library as well. So um, I did speak to the mayor and um, and uh, we, we've all had discussions, and as he said the other day, whoever becomes mayor, whoever that person is, has already assured him, there's two people running, that it will carry on. It's not a one, it's not a one-time hit, um, which is great because there was a lot of people there, and it was fun. It was fun. I'm not sure what Castle Fowler was eating. I saw him in the corner. I don't know what that was, but he was he was smiling. He was smiling. Anything else before us? Right Meaning adjourned. Travel safe. <laughs>